Today we're going to show how SAS can simplify and speed up your styling workflow. You may also be interested in our Introduction to Haml screencast, available on screencasts.org. Like Haml, SAS is the brainchild of Hampton Catlin and stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. And it lives up to its name. SAS style sheets are awesome. Have you ever had to do a find and replace in your style sheet to change a hex color for a client? Have you ever had to pull out your calculator to figure out a column width in a multi-column design? SAS overcomes these issues with the introduction of variables, mix-ins, nestings, and selector inheritance. SAS looks similar to CSS, but without the semicolons and parentheses. Like Haml, SAS uses two-space indentations to define code nesting. OK, so now that you see how to write SAS, let's look at what makes SAS so awesome. This is what a variable looks like in SAS. Variables are declared by placing a dollar sign in front of the name. You can manipulate variables with SAS's built-in functions like darken and lighten. In this example, the paragraphs will be a darker blue than the H1s. You can also add and subtract variables of the same type from each other. For example, if we wanted to manually darken a color slightly, all we would do is subtract away 111. If we wanted to increase a font size by 10 pixels, all we would do is add it. There are two types of nesting. The first type is called selector nesting. This is where we structure our SAS as a nested structure, similar to how you would nest your HTML or HAML. Looking at the generated CSS side by side, you can see that nesting the name class under the column class generates the CSS selector column name. The second type is property nesting. You can nest properties that start the same. In our example, here we have font, then a new line in two spaces, then what you'd normally put after the hyphen. So when we write font, a new line, two spaces, then wait, it becomes font-wait. This behavior works for all hyphenated selectors. Using nesting like this is a great way to organize and structure your CSS and keeps your code dry. Another great feature of SAS is mix-ins. Mix-ins allow you to reuse whole blocks of properties and selectors, and you can even pass arguments to them. You can also specify default values. To define a mix-in, use the at mixin keyword followed by the name of the mixin. Then, if you require parameters, include parentheses and name your arguments. If you want to add a default value, add a colon followed by the desired value. To include the mixin, use the at include keyword followed by the name of your mixin with any parameters declared in parentheses. This SAS will get compiled down to this CSS. We specified the radius in H1, but for the column we didn't specify anything, so in this case the default value was used. The final feature we're going to talk about today is selector inheritance. With selector inheritance, you can tell any selector to inherit all the styles from another selector. To use it, type the keyword at extend followed by the selector you want to inherit from, and all of the selector's styles will be inherited. To get started with SAS, simply install it by running gem install Haml. SAS is actually still included in the Haml gem, but this is set to change with version 3.1. SAS will then be its own Ruby gem. You can use SAS as a command line tool to output and process your SAS into CSS. You can do this by typing SAS followed by dash dash watch, which means it will watch for changes, followed by your SAS files folder, followed by your output CSS folder. So we have a folder that contains our SAS files and an empty style sheets folder. We start the watcher, and as you can see, it outputs the CSS. If we make a change to the SAS file, it overwrites the CSS. You can also try SAS online without installing it by visiting sas-lang.com slash try.html. What we've gone over so far is SAS. However, there is a new format called SCSS, or Sassy CSS. The difference between the two is that sassy CSS looks more like what you're probably used to with CSS, but it has sassy features like variables, mix-ins, nesting, and selector inheritance. To convert sass to sassy CSS manually, you'll need to rename your .sass file to .scss. You'll also need to include a semicolon at the end of every value and include squiggly brackets. So the following SAS would look like this in SCSS. 
As you can see, they're similar, but there's more opportunity for errors if you forget the semicolons. It can also get messy with the closing brackets, as you'll see in a minute from our previous demo. We personally prefer the SAS syntax to SASE CSS, but we're showing this for completeness. Both of these syntaxes will be supported going forward in SAS 3. So feel free to use the syntax that works best for you. SAS for code that's more concise, or SCSS for code that's more similar to CSS. We'll include a download in the show notes for the SAS featured in today's episode, along with the SASE CSS equivalent for comparison. So this is how you use SASE CSS. Type SAS dash dash watch, and then the folder where your SASE CSS is stored, and then the output folder. Here's a comparison between SAS and SASE CSS side by side. As you can see, the more you nest, the more confusing the closing of parentheses can get. While it may look similar to what you're used to in CSS, it doesn't really feel right to us. But the choice is yours. Either will help you out in your development career. Because SAS and SASE CSS can be pre-compiled before deployment, you can use these tools with any programming language you might use to build your web app. There are, however, some considerations when deploying with Rails. In some production environments, SAS can be compiled on the fly with the first request. However, some hosts, such as Heroku, don't allow write access to the public directory, so you have to pre-compile before adding to version control and deployment. SAS also comes with a command line tool which converts your current CSS into valid SAS or SASE CSS. Type in sas-convert, dash dash from CSS, which is the format you wish to convert from, then dash dash to SAS, which is the format you want to convert to, then dash r, which means recursively convert all files in the directory, then dot, which is the current directory. And that's how to use SAS to simplify and structure your layout code. We hope you've enjoyed this introduction to SAS. We're planning on releasing more Hamel and SAS screencasts in the coming weeks, so check back soon. Thanks for watching! Subscribe to our RSS feed, follow us on Twitter, and please leave any comments, questions, or suggestions for new screencasts in the comments below. If you like our videos, please like us on Facebook and feel free to join the conversation there. See you next time!